Eleanor Roosevelt wasn't always married to Franklin Roosevelt, but even before their wedding day, she was always a Roosevelt because they were related. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. Presidents Franklin D. Roosevelt and Theodore Roosevelt were related, but not as closely as some other same-name presidents, like the father-son Adams and Bush duos. The presidents Roosevelt were fifth cousins, meaning they shared a common four times great-grandfather. Nicholas Van Roosevelt, who lived from 1658 to 1742. Theodore's brother, Elliot, had a daughter named Anna, but she went by her middle name, Eleanor. Because Eleanor was one more generation removed from Nicholas Van Roosevelt than Franklin, she is said to be his fifth cousin, once removed. Marriage between some level of cousinship is not unusual. From 1650 to 1850, a given person was, on average, fourth cousins with their spouse. The more wealthy and powerful the family, the more likely a union to a close cousin in order to consolidate that wealth and power. And when this happened with royalty, it led to some really unwell offspring. Once people realized that birth defects were more likely in the offspring of close relations, the practice became more taboo, and then illegal. In 1858, Kansas became the first U.S. state to ban first cousin marriages. Others followed. Today, 24 states have such a ban. Some notable people married their first cousins, like authors Edgar Allan Poe and H.G. Wells, as well as scientists Charles Darwin and Albert Einstein. But all of this relates to first cousins, which have 500 times more common ancestral DNA than fifth cousins once removed. Distant cousins, meaning third cousins are greater, have a much much lower chance of birth defects in their children. By 1950, married couples were, on average, closer to seventh cousins than the fourth cousin's average of a hundred years earlier. In addition to the growing concern for healthy children, transportation methods improved, meaning people could go further from where they were born to find true love. And people were having fewer children, meaning people were having fewer cousins. Today, married people are, on average, tenth cousin relations. Eleanor first met Franklin when she was two and he was four, although neither remember the encounter. They crossed paths again as teenagers at dances and parties, and over the years became close. In 1903, 22-year-old Franklin proposed to 19-year-old Eleanor within a few months of officially dating. In New York, on St. Patrick's Day, March 17, 1905, Eleanor's uncle, President Theodore Roosevelt, who two weeks earlier had been sworn in for a second term, walked her down the aisle to marry Franklin. Eleanor wore a white satin gown, trimmed with lace, and carried a bouquet of lilies of the valley. Franklin and Eleanor were married by Reverend Endicott Peabody, the headmaster of the Groton School where Franklin and Teddy's sons had been students. Interestingly, Peabody was also someone who had married his first cousin. Endicott Peabody also had a role in saving football. Check out the video here to watch that presidential story. On his way out of the wedding reception, Teddy reportedly shared his thoughts on the Roosevelt-Roosevelt marriage. It is a good thing to keep the name in the family, he said. Eleanor and Franklin were married for 40 years, until Franklin's death in 1945. Franklin and Eleanor were not even the closest presidential cousin couple to marry. John Adams and Thomas Jefferson each married their third cousins, but their wives' maiden names were not the same as the future presidents. Which is a shame because having the same name means you don't need to learn a new signature and you don't have to update any of your government-issued IDs. But this is why the Roosevelt story gets so much more attention. Thanks for watching. If you want to marry this video, help out the channel. Like and subscribe. And please walk down the aisle to POTUS.com to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.